Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm so glad to hear his word ministry to you, God. Praise this morning. We're going to go forward with the order of our service. We're going to experience the glory of God. If you would, um, prepare yourselves for um, scripture reading and intercession by uh, the Robinsons. They're going to take us further in the um, with intercession and scripture reading, and from there we will go forward uh, with praise and worship, and then we will hear the word of the Lord from our very own Apostle Taylor. Would you would, would you please uh, give a hand clap of praise for the Robsons as they come forth? scripture reading will be coming from John chapter 8. Could you please stand for the word of God? And we'll be starting at verse 1 through 12. Are we ready? Amen. Amen. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be condemned, should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to continue. This they said, tempting him, that they might have cause, accuse him. But Jesus still stooped down, and with his fingers wrote on the ground, as though he had, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, glory be to God, went out one by one, being at the eldest, even unto the least. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but should have life, should have the life of life. Amen. The word of the Lord Amen. may be a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers. Amen. This morning, I just want to thank God. Thank you, Lord. Truly thank God. I want us all to just thank God. Thank you, Father. Give him glory. I mean, just, just praise him because he's worthy. <laughs> As we pray, we're just going to thank him. Thank him for, all he's, for what he's done. And most of all, for what he will do. Father, we thank you this morning for you being in the midst. Father, we thank you right now for your, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. For it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you, Father. But as you said in Matthew chapter 6, Lord, we that we shouldn't worry about anything. Not only food and clothing and shelter, Father God. You said we shouldn't worry about anything. You also said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. And I'm here to tell you, Lord, that we thank you for what you give us. All that we need is supplied for, Father God. Without asking, without even thinking, Lord. But we trust your word. 
And we lean on your word, Father God, and I pray that we believe and receive your word right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that your word tells us that we cannot only have what we need. But if we believe in you and your word, we can also have what we want. You said the life that's here for the Lord, and we will give you the desires of thy heart. So no word, no stress, no woe, we can thank you for it, Lord. Yeah, and we give you glory. Yeah, Father, we thank you for your spirit that lives and moves and abides within us, Father God. Yeah, and Father, we pray that your, your spirit might fall fresh on us today, Father. Yeah, right, if there's anything in us, Father, that's not of you, we ask that you purge us. Yeah. Purge us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, and Father, we thank you for having this opportunity just to be in the midst of your presence, Father God. Just Father, we love you. We thank you right now, Father. We thank you for life and life more abundant. And Father, without, without your spirit within us, Father God, how can we live and move and have no how can we have peace without you, Father? But we thank you, Father. We ask that you continue to bless us and keep us in your peace. Father, we give you glory. We thank you for this ministry, Lord. And Father, we give you a shot, Father, Lord. You know, no But it's a blessing not only to those who serve and be in the congregation, Father God, and minister to them, Lord. It's a blessing to all those who come upon us. We just give you the glory and thank you for that, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for our pastor, who is a great man of God. You have raised him up, Father God. You have given him strength. Now, understand that most of all, you have no anointing in him, Father. You have your word in him, Father God. Mm. You say you give him calls of God, and you give him the Father God. We pray that you right now will bless him with more of your spirit, more of your anointing, and more of your glory. We ask that you give him strength to overcome whatever the devil brings up against him. And Father, as you strengthen him, may he continue to strengthen us, Father God. May that anointing and that oil from him flow up and roll down on us. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we acknowledge there's no other God but you. You're the great I am. You're the first. Thank you. 
Come and see us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Amen. Can we stand in full worship right there for a minute?
but making it more capacity, more room for your presence, more room for your glory. We're making more room to hear your voice, more room to be healed, more room, Father God, for your will to be done, for your kingdom to come. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, saturate this place, speak to us, talk to us, feel us, purge us, anoint us, take us higher. Come Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch us, touch us in our broken places, in our wounded places, fill us in our empty places, in our broken places, oh God. Come Holy Spirit, we desire you. We desire you. We desire you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, worship. Just worship. That's what you came for the worship. And that's what you receive your worship. He said, He inhabits the praises of His people. He said he inhabits it. He'll come sit right down in your praise. He'll come sit right down in your comfort and hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We give you the glory, hallelujah. Cause you're worthy, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're faithful. Come on, thank him for what he's already done. Thank you, thank you. You know what he's done. You can only give him that praise. You can only glorify him from your mouth for what he's done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Just stand right there with your hands lifted, minds open, heart open, ready for God to speak. Mm.
first instance you go to and you think about the horse, four horsemen of the apocalypse, he said, no. He said, turn to Revelations, the 19th chapter. So I went to Revelations, the 19th chapter. Here's part of your word for today. Revelations 19, you can be seated, verse 1. Revelation 19, verse 11 is where I'm going to start, another one. He says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat up on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. In righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. It shall not And the armies which were in heaven Followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath. Almighty God. And he that have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fire that fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast in the king of the earth. And their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him, and which deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. It's imperative that you understand. I issued a cold red last week. Emergency. Repent, engage the gospel, and get delivered. For he who sits on the horse is coming. He who sits on the white horse is coming. God says, tell you to come out. the horse and the rider are ready. I hope you hear the impact. The horse and the rider are ready. There's nothing to prevent. I shared a dream with a couple of weeks ago. 
There's nothing in the way now of his return. But this is an hour that we held from the rooftop is soon in coming. Be ye ready. I gave another word. I did read it. I'll read it again for you. He says, tell my people, get ready for a divine rising. It's time. Time to rise out of your slumber, your sleep. Arise and put on strength. Prepare ye the way. For not many days hence, and it shall be so. For the days have been spent, and only hours remain. And I come to you. So get ready, get up, prepare yourself as a bride for the for wedding day. Hear the sound, hear the whisper. I'm calling unto you, my beloved. How long you say? But I replied, Behold, I come quickly. So again I say, prepare for a divine rising. It's on the horizon. Tell my people, be ye clean, be ye holy, be ye ready. Tell my people, repent for my kingdom is at hand. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For I supply thee, I equip thee. Now look to me, make ready. For I have warned you. So serious is the hour. So important must be the understanding that even as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, several weeks ago I told you this would be a resurrection different from all resurrections. Pastor, why is this resurrection different? Because this resurrection falls in a divine time on the calendar of God. This is your leader here. This is year when God says, I reverse, I restore, I give back, and I give double for the trouble. It's not an ordinary moment, nor an ordinary time. But it's a time that we must take serious God's presence and God's will. It's a time that God has made plain that this is a time to observe Anytime we come into feast season, it's a time of observation. God says, remember from whence I brought you. Remember, I brought you out of 430 years of bondage. You cried out to me to come, and I came. You cried out to me to heal, and I healed. You cried to be delivered, and I said, If you dare ask to go back to Egypt. No different than watch this Matthew 21. Go to Matthew 21. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. If any man say all unto you, this is what you tell them. 
The Lord have need of them. And straightway. They'll be sent. All this was done that it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying. There's some things God's getting ready to fulfill in this season. It's already been spoken. It's already been decreed and declared. It's already been released. Tell ye the daughters of Zion. Look at this word. Y'all. Look how it ties together. Tell ye the daughter of Zion. Behold thy king cometh. The king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put on put on them their coals. And they set him their own. See, it makes a difference in this season where you set in Jesus. It makes a difference in this season, the place you're preparing for him. He ain't going just anywhere. He ain't going to buy just anywhere. He ain't going to live just anywhere. Prepare your temple. For the clean and the unclean shall not dwell together. The holy and the unholy shall not abide. And a very, very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and straw them in the way. Not only, Gene, were they careful where they set him, the way was paved for him. They said, we won't let you walk on ordinary dirt. God, you're too holy to be considered ordinary. You're too precious to be handled any kind of way. How you handle God determines how you handle And the multitude that went before him and followed him cried, saying, Hosanna! And that word Hosanna means this, God save me now. God save now. God, the urgency is, I ain't waiting another day, moment, minute, nor hour. Save now. going on. I see what's taking place. I see what's happening. Please. Please. Say it now. Ain't no age. Say it now. Ain't no got to get this right. Get that right. No, 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 no. It ain't gonna get right till you get Jesus. It ain't gonna turn till you get Jesus. It ain't gonna be free till Jesus frees it. They follow crying, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? This same question is getting ready to be asked. Who is this? Where did he come from? What's his name? Here is your privilege. You already know. You should 
already know. He said, prepare for the supper. The invitation is given. But this ain't a season, an hour for you to make excuses of why you can't come. Now watch this. Why are you telling him to come, but you ain't present? Why are you inviting him and you not there? Who is this? Who is this that's about to show up in your midst? Sitting in 48 did a movie some years ago, many years ago. Guess who? Coming to dinner. Are you having guests over? Is your house ready for a guest? Is your table ready for a guest? Hmm? Who is this? They say his name is Hosea. The one that can say. The one that can save me. The one that can save all of us. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus. This is the prophet of Nazareth. Out of Galilee. Who is this? It's Jesus. It's the mouthpiece of God declaring unto you the way of the Lord. It's the one that can say, the one and the only one. Look not to your left nor to your right. But look unto me, saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. Watch this, watch this. And right after this, look what Jesus did. He went into the temple. When he comes, where is he stopping first? The temple. Then there's a spiritual yes. temple. Both need to be ready. Yes. Both need to be prepared. That word prepare in the Hebrew is the word con, K U N. See, don't con yourself. First person to run the gym is you. To fool you. To think you ready. And you not. Has the house been swell? Is everything in place and in order? He said, I'm coming quickly. Quickly doesn't mean you have time to get ready. You must be ready. He just told you through the word, be ready. Anticipate his arrival. His coming. Look what he said. And he went into the temple of God and he cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple. His first ministry is deliverance.
And the Bible said he cast out. Now the question this morning is this. Do you want him to do it? Or are you ready to do it? You already know he going to get rid of it. Why are you going to wait? Why are you going to aggravate and antagonize the presence of God? When God says, I've already told you, I'm tired of that. I'm sick of that. I don't like it. Why infuriate the presence? He showed up to him. But he wasn't happy. Can I submit something to you that I know? God ain't happy right now. He ain't happy with the church. He ain't happy with his people. He ain't happy. Thus the warning. But he also ain't big. The days of pleading are over. He came into the temple and he cast all, all, all them that sold and bought in the temple. He overthrew the table of the money changers and the seats of them that sold dove. And he said unto them, my house. Okay, y'all ain't working with me today. He personalized. He personalized. He said, get this straight. It's my house. 1220th Street is his house. So that 1200 20th Street is your house. Because 1200 20th Street without you in it is an empty building. It's just bricks, it's just wood, hay, and stone. All things that can be burned.
And so I've had to come down. And I've had to declare again to you. It's my house. And the thing that should be done in my house is we should be communicating.
in the temple and notice what he did. He healed them. That's an indictment, y'all. He healed them. And he released judgment on the rest. He healed the dysfunctional ones. Because they were more sensitive. He healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and again saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. This is so crazy. They were so displeased. Y'all ain't caught that, did you? The chief priest. The preacher mad because God came to his own house. The preacher mad because God came to his own house and set on. That's getting ready to be a reckoning and a shame. Did you see that, Jim? What did he say? They got mad, James, because God came home. Charlie, they got mad because God came home. Hear that, hear that echo. You mad because he coming? No, you mad because you ain't wrecked. You mad because you ain't got your stuff together. You mad because you a mess. That's right. That's why you're mad. You're mad because you don't want to change. But you're going to have to change if you go in with him. you mad because you like what you're doing. And they were so displeased and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, No, you, you, you want me to hear? You need to hear. <laughs> hear what they say. No, you hear what they say. And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Perfected praise will come. You mad because the children are worshiping me? You mad because the babies got a praise and you've been in the church with your old rusty, dusty self 40 years and you ain't got a praise yet? With your hypocritical, pretentious, self serving self. mad because what come out of you is closer to me than you. See, because you would, they will. Because you make excuses, they're innocent. They love me. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling. He says, Watch this. You have not read. How did you become a priest and be yet so ignorant? Where'd you get your license from? Who ordained you? Who? 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 Who your pastor? Who signed that piece of paper? Woe be unto them. the first thing he should have had you do was engage the gospel. The first thing you should have learned coming into the ministry is the gospel. 
but you have not raised You have not spent it. And I never ordained you in the first place. And he left me. And he went out of the city. Spirit is cast out of a man. 
that spirit goes back into a dry place. And the spirit considers, I had my way over there. I don't like being out here. Because out here, I can't manifest who I am. See, as long as I'm in you and I'm a drunken spirit, we can drink till the sun come up. If I got a holy spirit, we can be I'm a anywhere, everywhere. Motel 86, Sheridan, it don't make no difference. Because saints do go a whore. Literally and spiritually. That's what that word means. It means I'm entertaining what ain't even covenant. That's why I told you to get married. But right now, see, you got this spirit on you now. It's called seducing spirit because it forbids to marry. That means you don't want to get married. You're under a spirit. You would rather go whoring than to have a covenant. Everybody ain't hurt you. What happened to you knowing that God can heal? Well, why you didn't get in your hurt? Well, God, don't touch this. Y'all, because you want to justify doing what you want to do. Hurt people, hurt other folks. You got hurt, now you want to hurt somebody else. Your heart was broke, now you want to break somebody else's heart. Bible says in the last days. Go to Timothy. I'm almost done. This know also, 2 Timothy 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covenants, grossers, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unhopely, without natural affection, Truth breaker, false accusers, incontinent, fear, and despisers of that which is good. Traitors, daddy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. You would rather do what pleases you than to please God. I don't care what that scripture says. He ain't talking to me. In the old Bible. He talked to you. See, instead of highlighting that, you want a permanent marker. You want to erase that. You want to black that out. That ain't in my book. He talked to me. Yes, he is. Wow. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Five. Having a form. You put on the appearance of being godly. It's just a form, no substance. It's the shape of, but no content. It's a bottle, but it's empty. You shape like, you look like, but ain't no content. Pop the top, ain't nothing coming out. No fears, no sins. Well, you'll get that one by midnight. Hmm? No fears, no sins. That's an indictment. That speaks to your weakness, not your strength. a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. From such. When you see what's listed,
is a form with no content. For of this sort, for of this sort, are they which creep into houses. Look at you, creep, creeping. Look at you. Who was that? What was it? SW, one of them. I creep. You got to quit creeping. That's your problem. You're creeping. But you think you nobody see you in your creep. You better listen to the words. So I creep. You all right? Okay. Watch this here. Watch this here. For uh, this is all in the book. For of this sort of they which creep in the houses. Watch this now. And be captive silly women. We'll go over it. Not today. Too much time. There are over 16 to 18 different types of women that the Bible speaks of in Proverbs. But this one right here is a silly woman. The silly woman has her door open to everybody. Stick with the book. The silly woman allows. There to be creepy. She has no standard, no desire of covenant. She's just open. Reach about. For this sort of thing was creeping the houses and be captive. What? Now, what does this woman look like? She laden with sin. She is yet to be cleansed. She is yet to be clean. She is yet to make covenant with God. She's no different than the woman God met and said, and ain't none of them your husband. Ain't none of them your husband. Ain't none of them. Truth. 
The river around here hollering about I'm living my truth. That ain't nobody's truth. If it ain't the word, it ain't true. It's your opinion. It's what you think. But what you think you're doing that's right is about to lead you to a devil's hell. Now show me the truth. Truth is deliverance. The truth is to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. The truth is to be ye clean, saith God. That's the truth. I'm a diva, you're a fool. According to this book, Never learned, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janice and Jeffries withstood Moses, see what they did? They withstood Moses. They didn't want the preacher telling them this. Some of you, you might be mad when you get through with this today. It's all right. You won't be the first one to get mad at me. But you better go argue with the book. Now, as Janice and Jeff Reese withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. You resist this. You fight this. Now, ain't that no time you may go home. What pastor preached this message today? You ain't getting excited about this one. The pastor missed it on this one. He missed it on this one. What's your, what's your pastor preaching about? Child, you don't even want to know. You ain't going to tell nobody to watch this one on YouTube, right? Sorry, we're going to put it out there anyway. Huh? Now, as Janice and Jam Rays withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning faith. I'm going home. Watch this. I don't write it, I just interpret it for you. Nine, but they shall proceed no further. God says, I bring a stop to this foolishness. Reach a Bible. Who's he talking to? Them that got their own way of doing it. He's silly one. He said, you are going to proceed no further. And that's what God said, I'm tired of this mess. I've had enough of this. You shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men as theirs was also. And God says, what I did to them of old, I'm getting ready to do to those of now. Because I wrote it all down for your learning. And I've given you opportunity and space to repent and to be healed and to be delivered. I've given you time to align your life with my will. And you choose your own pleasure. But my house shall be called a house of God. 